controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Placebo. Da. Placebo. <sighs> I love placebo effect because it's real, Hans. Well, God damn it! Yeah, I think it's so cool. Like, I feel that obviously it's one of the first things you kind of talk about and learn in science. Not the first things, but it's obviously such a powerful tool that was developed to test against other drugs. Like the placebo yeah. effect, not necessarily, but using like control studies where yeah. you use a placebo that is nothing, it is a sugar pill or something, was like a genius invention. It's also little just did like, they know, yeah, that they're like, oh, these it's <laughs> magic. They keep doing well. They keep doing well. <laughs> we are here to tell you that magic is real. No, we are here to tell you why the placebo effect works, and it's just funny. It also just makes me realize that humans, like, cognitively, are so smart that we're dumb. What do you mean? Like, we're so smart that we can trick ourselves into thinking things work. Because, like, because... <laughs> yeah, it makes I mean? you Which realize your consciousness <laughs> is really just one tiny little part of you. Yeah. Because, and it's out of your control. <laughs> yeah. And, like, even when... Yeah, I, my study is really interesting for that, which I'll touch on. But, like, placebo, you obviously think... Like, one thing I... Anyway, okay. Just go. Just keep no, no, into no. I want to first talk about other things first because what is the placebo for people who don't know for sure? It's just like when a placebo is usually given as a decoy in a study. So like if we're testing drug A, we want to give drug A to some people, but drug placebo to others so we can have a reference point of like oh is it just like the body that's making them feel well or does drug a actually make a difference? Sadly, like when we tested the vaccines, <laughs> some people got not the vaccine as the placebo right. and then we <laughs> sent them off into society and they got way more sick and then that's how they do oh the vaccine is <laughs> working. working because the like, people who got the placebo are sucks like, yeah no. to get a fake vaccine and be like oh sweet i got the no, vaccine. what would be an interesting placebo effect study did those people who got the fake vaccine get a 24-hour flu later because they assumed they had it true like so that so from the placebo a lot of studies realized there's actually the placebo effect or the nocebo effect sometimes where it actually a placebo can impact you and your body obviously not in the sense that it's like going to cure a disease or like if you have an infection for the most part yeah. the placebo is not <laughs> is not going to make you like kill off the infection but there are lots of studies and evidence that kind of show okay but it could help you with headaches it could help you with pain anxiety. modulation if people you think it works there's this sort of connection where your body sometimes does things because it thinks there's a drug inside you or it thinks that something's going to work and as a result you see a proper response yeah. which is actually really cool insane. <laughs> yeah or it's just like it's the reason why we're still talking about this all the time and we talk about it all the time and so often in the research that you do they're talking about placebos and it's just so funny how sometimes they don't work because they actually just like end up working what do I, you mean oh because of the placebo itself yeah they're like and the placebo had effect too <laughs> <laughs> but the um i just like think it's so sad that probably the people who got the like sugar water vaccine definitely 24 hours after like their other friend in the study was like i'm so sick and they were like i'm not sick like damn it <laughs> but that you know happened what I mean? to like, some I people who get, get the it. vaccine oh yeah true right like true. not everyone got a <laughs> if i was in that a, trial sorry. like early days wanting the vaccine so bad and i wasn't getting sick i'd be so annoyed well didn't our first first dose we didn't get sick second dose we got sick. exactly and i remember thinking yeah, like true. well i hope it's working <laughs> yeah i remember like when everyone was getting sick and i wasn't after the first dose i was mad because i was like i want to feel sick because that's how i know you it's no yeah you know they didn't like miss your arm back yeah i was like did they yeah did they squirt <laughs> squirted in the air by mistake whereas the second time when i got sick i kind of like got all under the covers and was like yes it's finally <laughs> like i know it's in me okay uh, but back to placebo do you want me to do mine i love mine yeah sure yeah, yeah. like what is yours about Okay, so this is about the placebo effect actually taking place in the brain and them essentially, this is from last, it's a new study. So what made us think of this episode? Proving that like it actually physiologically changes your brain. when So you're, that taking a placebo is not just like a perceived impact, but something a, yeah, is happening physically in your In your, brain. your body to actually change you. To actually have you have increased pain tolerance and decrease your ability to feel pain. Okay. So what they did was like this is so fun. They would give there were three separate groups. 
all got the same cream people they're all getting a <laughs> neutral cream like a topical cream yeah like? that they're gonna put on their skin okay so one of the creams was labeled lidocaine and was said to decrease pain be a pain relieving cream as in they saw that on it it's yeah like yeah pain they, they were like we're testing this uh-huh. pain cream and you <laughs> got the pain relief cream they rub 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 no, it that's, on their skin. that's how they talk we're testing this pain yeah cream. that's when you know you're at the placebo one they're like we're testing Hey. It's definitely real. Yeah, no, I don't know the like <laughs> tone of the scientists, but I assume they weren't. It's probably a piece to, of like, paper. Wink, at, like <laughs> oh, it has pain relief. Wink, wink. It's like I hope they're not doing that. The second one was called. Uh, it was considered to be heat intensifying cream, and it was labeled as capsaicin, which is like the chemical that makes like spicy, spicy in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Watch hot ones. <laughs> and then one was the neutral labeled cream that was said to be neutral. But guess what? They were all neutral. Anyways, okay. so then they were all touched with a hot object on the place where the cream had been rubbed in. Okay. And those with the lidocaine labeled cream reported decreased pain. But what also they did was while they did this, they hooked them up to an fMRI and watched their brain. Hmm. And their brains had noticeable changes in the PAG RVM pathway that mimicked pain relief. So like those people who reported that they had decreased pain when they had that like quote unquote lidocaine labeled neutral cream and their brain pathways mimicked people who had actually had pain relief given to them. Oh, wow. And then the same happened like on the other end for the nocebo effect for the heat intensifying labeled capsaicin one they had it was it was a different part of the brain heat intensifying so they thought it would make their arm burn yeah it would make it hurt more and it was like the parabranchial nucleus which is like a part of the brain that is like when there's increased pain was higher than anyone else in the study who had the neutral orbital interesting so their brain was actually changing to feel more pain in that case yeah to mimic what the results would be, but they all were just given neutral cream and given the same temperature hot object on the arm. That's nuts. I know. It's kind of cool. Well, okay. So also fMRI is blood flow in the brain yeah. that they are like imaging. monitoring, okay. but there's also other ways of studying actual neural impulses, like right. the electricity of the brain. And those are like more accurate. Okay. So, so this was thing. fMRI? fMRI. So it's just seeing the blood way flow. that the blood flows through the brain in those moments of pain comparatively to each other. Yeah. So essentially and maybe it's in like, relation to what it looks like when someone takes pain relief yeah, versus yeah. what, like the parts of the brain that yeah. are less or more active. They were certainly changed by the placebo and nocebo effect from these creams. <sighs> it's like... How do I get that? I, everything makes me in pain. <laughs> well, it's so interesting because we were just talking because we're going to go away to Columbia. Mm-hmm. And the next study, but I want you to go into yours, is, is a lo- it's really a lot about expectation. And so yes. I feel like you expect the worst. But, I, but okay, I'm going to just slightly disagree. <laughs> okay. I'm not okay. saying that. You're right. I am like, I ain't just nervous. We all know this about me. No, I, no, like, but I'm just, I I'm, do expect the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> But when it comes to pain, like some things are so instantaneous that I realize this can't be because I thought it was going to be a way. Like for sure in my life that does happen where I think yeah. I anticipate something and that makes it worse or I am more scared or I feel more hurt when it finally happens or something. But I definitely think there are times when I'm like a pain can often be instantaneous. Like you get hit by something. You're not like anticipating it. You're not expecting. Yeah. But in the moment I'm just like, ah! <laughs> but it's not like you're it's not like you're um like there's so many other aspects of pain tolerance right like you just have a lower pain like it's not like the placebo is the be all end all for why you feel maybe more pain than other people oh no i don't think that but i'm I just guess... saying one factor about you i think is that you're more you're more sure. anticipating pain in general Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm not because I've like almost like placeboed myself into thinking I can't feel pain. No, you actually can't though. Well, who knows? Maybe it's because <laughs> I just like placeboed myself. I just, I'm like, yeah, I can't feel pain. And then like, I obviously can feel pain. <laughs> like I can, like, I'm not like walking like into hot ovens by mistake or like, I feel anything. like you literally are sometimes. <laughs> no, I burned my finger once. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I feel like I'll be like, what's that giant scar on you? And you'll be like, I don't know. That, there'll be like yeah, a bruise no, and just like, I don't know. <laughs> but like, I'm just saying that it's not, the placebo isn't the only reason. It's just like all linked. And I just think when it comes to expectation, like 
we do function differently. You do expect okay. things to go wrong. Well, this I will go into my study because yeah, it do does it, kind do of it. segue because I wanted to point out that, yes, expectation is a big part of placebo. Like if you think you're getting a drug, then you're perhaps more likely to your body to have a response related yeah. to that drug. However, this study was showing that that's not always the case. Like there people don't always expect to get better with a placebo and sometimes they do so this is like been a really crazy study it was a randomized control study they basically told the patients they were giving them a placebo which they don't okay. normally do right like normally you give a drug and a placebo and everyone thinks like mm, the cream fun, example like everyone you're thinks. giving up you're getting it was like so all these pe patients i think there was about 70 or 80 um had ibs and they're put into two groups ew fart shitty farters <laughs> kidding wow did i just shame the ibs yeah I'm that includes me canceled. actually <laughs> yeah and like no, I you, was just hung over you on for, Sunday. No, you for I was sure just hung IBS. over on Sunday. It's the only reason no, I had No, Greg for sure has IBS. You don't feel pain, but your gas suggests you have IBS. Okay, I don't have <laughs> IBS. I have really bad farts. Is that the same thing? Yeah, not the same thing, but I think it's a symptom. And I think I, you don't like feel pain, so you don't know what's going no, on. No, I really don't think I have IBS. Pain. I think I do have a flatulence problem, though. <laughs> and I don't know if they're like, reach out if you also have... I feel like someone Heart did bubbles. one time send us a recommendation for like a pill you can take. Oh, yeah. It's called like No Stinkies or something. <laughs> I hated it. I had a bad name, but I didn't want it. Okay. Oh, anyway, Bino. Okay, continue. Bino was one of them, yeah. So basically, group A was actually given no treatment. So they were just a control study. Um, but they were that like sucks. talked to with the doctors and stuff. So everything else in the condition was the same. And group B were given and told they were given placebo pills. For, for what? Their, for for what? their IBS. Oh, IBS. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So these patients have IBS. On the bottle also, this is what it said. It says, <laughs> placebo pills made of an inert substance like sugar pills that have been shown in clinical studies to produce significant improvement in IBS symptoms through mind-body self-healing processes. Whoa. So that's funny. Someone yeah. might actually like not be able to read that, that and like think, and think that. Oh, oh, I mean like in a way, but it's letting you know it's a placebo and but placebos it's have been shown to help. That's okay. true. Interesting. That is true. Um, as you wow. might have guessed, the people who took the placebo had oh significantly God. fewer symptoms than the control group, um, which is just so wild that even when people knew they were taking a sugar pill, they felt better. That's so weird. And in this study in particular, their sort of like conclusion was you can like physicians can benefit their relationship to patients by having informed consent. So instead yeah. of having to trick your patients, you can actually talk to them and say like, let's actually try this placebo because it's been shown that it can oh, help. Oh my God. I love that. Like literally like doctors giving people with IBS <laughs> placebo well, okay. sugar pills. Is this a crazy idea that I want to make a video about this and give myself sugar pills and try and tie it to something and see if like my chronic pain goes No, away? you should do that. I've always wanted to do a, like we could so easily just explain experiment. placebo studies in an ASAP Science video while just like tricking all of our friends. Because mm -hmm. like it's, although they might be like, I don't want to take your pills. <laughs> like, well, we'd be, it would just be sugar. You, I mean, it, it kind of like hmm. doesn't even have to, maybe pill. I, I'm curious. I'm sure there are examples. In fact, I know there are examples when it's not always pills. Some people take drinks, whatever. So it doesn't have to be a literal pill like you could just condition yourself to associate one thing and there were a lot of other, other really cool studies that talked about conditioning so if you um g give someone a drug while they're doing something or taking a specific drink you can actually create a placebo when you eventually remove that drug from the drink that the drink itself now like a help. drink with, with alcohol, take something. the alcohol out, but then you're still drinking and it feels like you're drunk. I mean, I that yeah, that's not what the studies were on, but I'm assuming that could happen. And I think it's like, I would love to do a video as well. On, Where we like, pretend everyone's fake, drunk. Yeah, like giving everyone alcohol and seeing how that to act. So but it's mean. like, it's like non-alcoholic. I love that. <laughs> um, just like seeing how silly everyone gets. But in this case, I think it was for headaches. And they realized at first, First, you couldn't just give them the drink in this case. It didn't work if you just told them it would make them better. But if you actually... Wait, like a drink to help a headache? So I, I might be mixing up... No, okay. I'm mixing up two examples. Okay. But I'm just kind of giving like a general sense yeah. to apply to both. It's as though if I just gave you this drink and said this will cure you, it might not. Uh, in one case, it was with like 
um, altitude sickness because obviously that's like a real thing that's happening yeah. too. But they realized if they actually gave you something to make you feel better, like a real drug, the first time and then the second time and then the third time and eventually removed the drug from it, your body would, mm. because you were conditioned, have the response. Not as strong as the original drug in this case, but it was showing how like your brain starts to link well, yeah, feeling good we with just this thing. Saw mm-hmm. that your brain freaking changes. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and it just blows my mind that like you can just like have a gross drink and then like cure yourself of some things, not of a lot of things. But I'm like, have I ever been placeboed? I feel like I I've been sober back when I like had gout and like couldn't drink, then realized that I actually maybe just was tying my shoes too tight. <laughs> Don't that want to admit gout. that, but that was a hell that I lived through. I was crushing the bones of my feet. Thought I had gout because I'm a disgusting white piece of garbage. But turns out I actually <laughs> was just gouts to come in my future. Is gout like a, a white disease? To me, gout is like like kings like of... inbred like Queen Elizabeth's grandfather who sat around and had like like servants giving him like bread and cheese all day while he like <laughs> ordered the French to like be massacred. Like to me, it's that evil okay. white people. Okay. You know what I mean? Like colonial people. Um, anyway, no, I don't my know. My ancestors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I do feel like when I've been around drinking while sober, I start to feel drunk. When you've been around, oh, like when you are sober and other people. Like, and drinking. everyone's drinking, it's like, and I'm drinking like, you know, ginger ale. Like, I just start to feel. <laughs> yeah. Drunk. I guess, but that might be just because everyone's like acting the energy, fun. like the mood. Yeah, it changes. I, Definitely, I if I like, time I've thought, if like, I pop an Eddie, then I immediately am like, I'm high. <laughs> Even though I know that's not true. Okay. Like, yeah. Because your body's you're like, but, but it might be a mix of just like nervous, anxious, those kind of things. I really want to get placeboed. Um, I thought it was interesting, like, the things that it said placebos have been shown in studies to help. Because, obviously, it's not a panacea. Like I said, you can't kill an infection with it. Ooh, the panacea, the word's back. Yeah, but... um, it Yeah, like, been... you can't, like, get strep throat and then, like, not take antibiotics. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. But, like, pain, dizziness, fatigue, anxiety, depression, and nausea have all Ooh. been shown um, to... Sometimes the placebo rivals actual drugs that are on the Say market. those things again. Pain, dizziness, yeah. fatigue, anxiety, depression, and nausea. And Whoa. there have been even some studies that talk about, like, even, um, like, as opposed to taking, like, drugs for, and this is not a recommendation, by the way, but drugs for <laughs> depression or anxiety, that, like, there are other treatments that could potentially be placebo that, like, rival those drugs. Wow. Those are really interesting things. And it's, like, an, in, it's, I'm going to say interesting again, but, like, it's a, a place to start with like wanting to maybe take less drugs. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what's kind of made this interesting is like, can we get the desired effect with taking less drugs in the first place? And pain is, well, pain is so weird. Nausea. Mm -hmm. That's a weird one. Nausea is, nausea is a weird one. Whenever I've had nausea, it's like, you can kind of like breathe. Like I always resort to breathing. Yeah. You, and sometimes it just goes away. You're like, what was that? And think about, <laughs> like, obviously nausea can be caused by a true physical, like, you could have bacterial yeah. infection or something going on. But it could also but be, like, it's like dizziness ones. or, like, yeah. car sickness. Or, yeah. So if you were able, like, obviously some of it is just your mind making you feel sick. Oh, yeah. Remember those, like, bands that people would put on when they were car sick? No. I was uh, never car sick, so I don't know. I don't, oh, well, really. <laughs> privileged. Gay privilege. <laughs> No, I actually also never got car sick really that Wait, bad. Wait, yes, you always, you always get car sick. No, I get car sick <laughs> if you even put a word in front of my eyes. Yeah, I'll be like, can you just quickly look up? No. no. <laughs> if you put like Twitter, anything in front of my eyes, barf bag, barf out the window. But if I'm just sitting in a car, it's not like it's out of my control. Yeah. And if you start stop, my dad was really into like going to 40 <laughs> and stopping in like what? neighborhoods in Toronto. And it would be like, yeah. and we would always what? be like, dad, stop. <laughs> but like, um... <laughs> But, like, in general, no, I guess I just had friends who were really car sick growing up. Oh, my gosh. This relates to our gum episode as well because someone messaged us and was like, my family kept gum in the car because it helps with car sickness. Oh, that is so the reason. Is that why you Well, don't gum? you think? We had gum for fresh breath, for sure. None of my family no, got but I'm car like, sick. No, but definitely they knew that if they did, they had something. Uh. Okay, so these were bands that would wrap around your wrist with this little plastic thing that would touch your pressure point right here. And I remember my friends would put them on and it was Fake. like, the, it literally was the first time I was like, I don't even want to go. Oh, so how do you think that were, you know what I mean? Like I didn't want to like that introduced you to the world of like, a placebo. The scientific method. No, I honestly remember being like, that's placebo for sure. Because 
I just cannot fathom with my understanding of the laws of nature how pressing your wrist could help. And I felt really bad because like it's my friend and he was puking, puking, puking with those wristbands Aww. on. I was like, those wristbands aren't working. And you know, and what? I think they were placebo. Reach out if they weren't. I wish I had done research on yeah, that. Yeah, because it is like, you know, as I've gotten older, obviously like there are elements of science, uh, like studies and stuff that have been pretty harsh on in the past. Like if there's not enough evidence for something or there, you know, of course you want to be on the side where you're like, well, there's no evidence for that bracelet. So like, let's uh, call it fake. But as but I've grown older, I do you. feel like, A, A yes, it's like yeah. if the placebo effect could have been working, then that's legitimate. And B, I think sometimes science has this like really harsh angle of of being so superior that it forgets that sometimes it can change and be wrong. And some things yeah. might be super nuanced that are hard to measure accurately. And I know like in a lot of ways, it's better to have the hard stance because otherwise you get like snake oil salesmen. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. who are trying to fake and sell you things yeah. that are not real. And that's a legitimate concern. But I do think there are elements of like, I don't know. I think I've been like really critical. Okay. Like this is a little, I don't, I don't like believe in astrology, obviously, but um, there are elements of like, I'm like, obviously the moon impacts the earth, like the position of the moon and then maybe the planets and stuff might have micro like changes on the earth. Like I, I am not one to know. Obviously I don't believe like we know specifically also, all the purposes. Also, placebo. Oh, true. Astrology yeah. could just be epic plus chibo <laughs> because people are like, oh, that happened on my birthday. I actually am like this. And then they're like that. Mm. And yeah. their brain's actually different because they like, have subscribed and be. believed it to be yeah. true. Because mm -hmm. that's another thing about like personality. Like this is all a big episode about like mind over matter a little bit. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of like you don't want to say mind over matter because it's annoying to say to people. But yeah, then this is that showing weird, that like yeah. the placebo effect actually changes your mind and mind over matter yes, is real. Yes, it has like within a range of or like to a degree, right? You yeah. have to like know where is that line when you're in real pain or yeah. real medical <laughs> help, you need to know when you probably should turn to like <laughs> medicine or proper care. Um, but there's okay. There, this is my. This is a bit of a mind over matter, more placebo studies. Because there's nothing worse than someone telling you mind over matter. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. And like you love to say it. <laughs> Who to me? Yeah. Oh, well, oh my god. Well, at I, a certain point, when you're dating someone <laughs> like Mitch, I have to go. I don't know. Go for a walk and drink some water because I don't know. Like, what else you want from me at this point? No, you'll say just, just try to stop being anxious. No, I won't say that. You'll give me a list of things that are so vague that I'm like, I don't know. Drink water, and then you get so mad. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Okay, so um, this is about psychedelic microdosing of mushrooms, which I thought this was a cool study because they started it by being like, it's using past studies. We know that micro dosing mushrooms is placebo or like they have not sorry they've not ever been able to prove that Whether the like micro dosing has yeah has actually been effect more measurably effective with mushrooms than with the placebo so they did this okay. study and they ended up with the exact same answer it's just like it was okay. just funny because you could tell they were trying to get something new and yeah. they were like okay <laughs> it's a placebo <laughs> so they had 81 people who microdosed um which is like kind of they change for each person's body weight, but I thought it was kind of confusing. The amount that they were get, being given was like mm -hmm. weirdly. I didn't know how they figured it out. And they found that there was increased self-reported psychological well-being, emotional stability, reductions in states of anxiety and depressive symptoms, plus increases in psychological resilience, social connectedness, agreeableness, nature related, like nature related, like happiness mm -hmm. and all aspects of like essentially psychological flexibility and functioning for four weeks. Um, they were given these, like um, micro dosing. they were actually like given, um, the mushrooms and they all not, sorry, they had a sliding scale of these positive aspects, but they all kind of did feel it. Okay. But what they did is they studied them before with surveys leading up to it a month before, two weeks before, during, throughout, after. And they found there was a direct correlation between the people who thought it, it was work. going to improve them yeah. and their increased ability to feel all of those things. So Whereas, if you thought you would feel that, then you were more likely to feel all those things. Yeah. If you were like anticipating, you're like, I'm so excited for my mushroom right. study. I know that like this, like mushrooms do change the way your brain works. I know this is why they had all these questions. People were like, I'm so excited to feel the way I'm going to feel. And although they all had measured 
positive increases from the microdosing. They found a strong correlation between the people who expected it to be better. And then the people who were kind of thought, A, it was going to be a placebo or that it might negatively affect their lives had like much less intense positive effects. Well, it's interesting then that they knew they were getting that. Like often you in a like double blind, obviously they like they wouldn't actually know what they're taking. And then yeah, the, the whole month, point was measure, just but essentially yeah, just surveying see. them yeah. throughout. And okay. they it was essentially like if I guess you, you need to like give consent if you're giving someone a like mushrooms. mushrooms like they yeah. need to know that's probably what they're taking. <laughs> But yeah, it was like people who didn't think microdosing would work, it had less of an effect on. People who did think it would work were like ch- okay. freaking chilling, having fun. This is the part that gets to me because I feel like I love the idea of being able to lean into the placebo and just like kind of believe in magic and these things. Or just like, <laughs> n- no, you know what I mean? Like there's a, there's this really romanticized vision of me where I'm like, oh, like I love the idea that if you think it's going to be what... It can be, but then you're like, oh, but if you know the placebo is real, then it can't yeah. work. Well, you. I think it's like, I think it's like, think about that. Like, my, like you microdosing mushrooms, you would be so nervous. Yeah. You'd be so scared about how much could go that. wrong. <laughs> but like a lot of people I think would be the opposite. They'd be like, I cannot wait to, like, I'd be in the middle. I think some people be like, I cannot wait to get paid to do mushrooms for four weeks and just be so happy. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. Well, then I'm just like, but then you're kind of like giving up on the placebo in that one, right? Or No, I guess what I mean is in life, sometimes I feel like I can see other people who believe oh. things that I wish I believed yeah. because it would make yeah. it easier yeah. because yeah, then yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. the placebo would work for me. But I can kind of, yeah. and this sounds like I'm not trying to be condescending. There's lots of things that I don't know and don't believe, but there are just times when I'm like, oh, I wish I didn't know that 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 doesn't work. Yeah, like I've no, read studies about so how that true. doesn't work. And science, so, like, like science is annoying. Because <laughs> like, even like yeah, not to yeah, get yeah, like, yeah. you know, any backlash from like chiropractors, but like most of the science is like, it doesn't work. And then I'm like, well, then I can't go to a chiropractor. Yeah, or even the like mis- the episode uh, throwback she listened to on massages. It's like, it's not like it's going to help you recover really right, any and better than good and, yeah, a nice exactly. little workout the next day. So it's like, now when I get a massage, I purely feel the gluttony of it and like i'm enjoying them touching me but sometimes they're like acting like they're gonna cure me and i'm just like okay babe say your thing but you know what i mean like, <laughs> right for whereas you, it would be fun if i was going there thinking i was curing like getting my body healed. And, and then you might actually get healed good. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean your, your muscles maybe you would like actually relax more if you were like this like resets my body and like makes this me is- stronger <laughs> But it's a strong like it's a strong reason to not listen to our podcast. Like, however, like, going going mind. back to my study though gave me hope because it is oh. like even sometimes when oh, you true. know a thing is a placebo, but you know like we can come full circle if we know yeah. that the placebo yeah. is actually a real effect and can help you. So just do you know what I mean? Like even yeah, when no, you know it's right. a placebo, you can go, well, that's fine. Placebos, gonna, placebos work. I'm just gonna placebo you. Just get me some sugar pills and every time you're like. <laughs> Going through the episode of the day. Well, I actually want to. Placebo pill will help exactly that and give it to you. (gasps) Well, I think I want to do it with. Like, I'm trying to think of the best things to do it with. Like, I get like a lot of headaches, not like migraines, like, but like you know, a couple times a week, I'm like, I need to take Advil, and I feel like it's often enough that I'm like, I don't want to be taking this much like pills, and I Hmm. feel like I wonder though if that one requires like medicine or if I was like trying to condition myself to like take a little sugar Mitch, pill if I was anxious or stressed or you had a headache. You have to try it. Put lidocaine, <laughs> label sugar pills lidocaine. You have to do it. Uh, because it's true. Like you're gonna, nothing can go wrong. Even and just it's like the ritualistic <laughs> nature. I think that's why sometimes like people love rituals because they really set your brain into a tone, right? Like yeah. there's like tea making rituals or even like coffee in the morning. Like you become conditioned to like, feel relaxed or calm or excited in different moments if you can build like habit around them and so i think taking it something yeah when you're feeling unwell or whatever could potentially be that like just helping just your brain feeling remember a like Go okay down, or it's just like a reminder yeah this is when i'm trying to relax i take my pill there's nothing better though my sugar than a pill that's real <laughs> like that's like actually doing the thing if you're sick well when you're actually truly yeah. sick yeah but like it's like penicillin that is a vibes. really great feeling i've only ever felt good taking pills to be wow what do you like, mean i'm canceled <laughs> You've this only is not felt good taking pills yeah like pills are always a cognitively like pleasurable experience for me because it's a sign of healing or vitamins or 
it's like they're a luxury of our yeah, age. Yeah, weird though. I feel like I, I I take some like I take vitamin D supplement, but I always feel weird Love when it. I do it. Why? I also have what? swallowing anxiety. Like I choke on pills a lot, so I just you like, need a placebo sick. pill to get rid of your anxiety around swallowing. Take a yeah, pill. <laughs> so it's, I gotta inject one. No, maybe I or no inject, cream. Just put a cream, cream on and your then I can neck. take my pill. It loosens yeah, my neck. Yeah, yeah. I can take a pill. Actually, my... do that. Like <laughs> do a lidocaine cream on the neck before the anxiety Which, like, of pill relaxes. Um, but yeah, sometimes when I like see vitamins and stuff in pills and a lot of times what? they find out you know like fish oil is not as effective as it is from fish yeah, yeah. see so there, like, you're going then, back to that science thing yeah that's where i'm like <laughs> well i want to just yeah you're right i am that's when i'm like i've read a study that was like taking fish oil does not get absorbed in your body the same way that eating fish. but you know that but it's like you're maybe not eating the fish that day because a you're vegetarian so now you're doing fish oil do you know what i mean like yeah, but isn't can you have fish oil if you're vegetarian? No, that's true. We have that. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, like, it's that's the thing. It's not. It's not black and white. It's like I'm gonna take fish oil maybe because I'm for the next week not planning to eat fish. Yeah, that's fine. I guess I just mean yeah. It sucks sometimes to know it because I wonder if thinking it works might actually help it more. I don't know. See, I don't know. I think maybe this is like it's good because it's like getting to the end of the podcast where it's like placebo effect. It it exists, but it's not that far. The positive benefits of a fish oil and the nutrients from fish oil right, is different are not going to be affected yeah. by placebo. You can't like think. will your no, nutrients you can't, into like, existence. No, you will yourself that like is, absorbing <laughs> potassium into the bones. That is a bad example. But yeah. I don't That's know. I'm saying. I'm just saying like it, it's like you should think about the things in your life. Nausea, pain, mm -hmm. so dizziness, headaches, fatigue, dizziness, anxiety. anxiety. And think about those what if are you're the listening to this. that are actually like coming from your mind yeah. in some ways and not from an actual outside source. Or you can like try placeboing those, but not like, you know, osteoporosis of bone Not density being like, from I'm, low I'm calcium. imagining this ice cube has so many nutrients. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm going to pretend there's calcium in this thing I'm eating so that I don't deteriorate my bones. Uh, but you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his book, which what? I've never read, but I've been told about, dating he, a used straight to, man. he used to say he would literally imagine and picture his muscles getting bigger and bigger and he thinks that was like a really successful technique <laughs> oh my god what a no loser lie. that's no. so cute great he's not a loser well oh my god i really didn't know you had this arnold schwarzenegger affinity i think he's a nice no there's guy. something like so funny about like a straight man being like i shut my eyes and i thought i'm <laughs> just getting bigger i'm getting bigger that to me is like i'm sorry we have to say that's embarrassing of all the things like we can say admit well, that's embarrassing it was his job Okay, I know. I'm just laughing at him. It doesn't mean that he's not a great person. It's like, that's really funny to uh, me. Like, the strongest man just, like, <laughs> shutting his eyes and, like, in a bath being like, the muscles will grow. It's like, <laughs> as, I mean, I'm not saying it won't work, but it's amazing. It, yeah. it, it, it probably won't work. You probably just worked out really hard. And that's well, or Arnold was the greatest example of placebo. What the hell? Where is this coming from? I don't know. It just came to my mind. No, it was but why are you obsessed with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I, I didn't know not. this. You, you, I can tell you are. I'm not you were like maybe he was just the best fitness man of all time. People, people consider him that, like bar none. Arnold bar Schwarzenegger none. is like what is happening? <laughs> Barbell none. Um, what is going on? Wait, you don't know this? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger is far and away considered like okay, I actually don't know this because <laughs> if you're a bodybuilder, you probably I need to ask my trainer about this. Um, because people like he's like so highly respected. Like you might see him as like. A movie star like, yeah a like guy who's bad at acting in the movie yeah about but the, he was like one figure. of the most successful bodybuilders of all time like he's like at the peak of his sport okay so then like that, his book is considered like the bible okay so then body. this is this is what okay right, i had no, a roommate doing i had episode. a roommate in university <laughs> yeah we're doing it we're fully doing an episode about bodybuilding oh that is so interesting to me because know yeah. what i want to pull the freaking rug out from underneath that it's subjective. It's what judged. Is? Like, it's just one of those things that's oh. like, it's well, like literally guys judging. And girls. Okay, I'm just focusing on this one really gay part about it, which is like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's guys judging other guys in Speedos and they're all like so hetero and mask. But I'm like, that is the gayest thing I've ever heard of. Wait, like, is that the same? Wait, I'm picturing bodybuilding competitions. Yeah, I no, I think you're right. But there is also like bodybuilding where you actually are like trying to lift the heaviest weights. That's weightlifting. Oh, is that different than? That's not what Arnold Schwarzenegger was but, doing. Okay, I got it. We got it. I'm, can we invite my trainer on the podcast? He's a bodybuilder. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm fascinated about this because we're okay. So up, 
it's the placebo's ending. We're, we're now getting you prepped for the upcoming episode about bodybuilding because you're going yeah, on and your on. Questions. Oh, you're like Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> is the objective, but it's like no, subjectively, people were like his body's nice, and but to me, I I'm like that's not that interesting. I think he like you think I, he was just. I think he, he was it. literally just Looked. posing, like literally in a thong, going. Oh. Yeah, but he obviously and lift a lot like, of weights. Oh. Right. And then yeah. everyone was like, he's the best. Oh, but it's like, I don't know. A, there's probably someone who's like better You're looking so than him. Wrong. B, no. what if what I like isn't Arnold Schwarzenegger? I like the other one, Russian guy beside him. <laughs> and I'm like, but you can't argue with me because it's a subjective visual competition. Think, okay, we have to save this because I'm like, they're definitely not just like, well, he's hotter. Um, I literally <laughs> think that they are. I am not kidding. I'm not kidding. So what do you think? Uh, because I'm like, I was like, maybe they measure their biceps I and think stuff. They do. But I actually think the oil and the flex, it's all about like who is the most like looks the best. I think there's like categories. I think it is like there's moments where you're posing and showing off in a certain way how much you can like suction in or pose this way. But I do think there are probably other like, categories and you think where, they measure them? where they maybe are more objective. I don't know. We're going to save this for the bodybuilding episode. Yeah, we will save this. And like, I'm pretty sure everyone in those bodybuilding goddamn competitions shut their eyes and placebo thinks about their muscles getting bigger. <laughs> That's for sure. Because if you're spending that much time trying to bodybuild, you're going to be also dreaming about your pecs growing. <laughs> but I will say... Um, obviously, I think it's way more interesting. Takes way more skill to figure skate, and that is really also thinking, like, it's so a sport that <laughs> arguably bothers me. When I'm like, why did they get four point eight? And truly, for over and over, they're like, oh, the judges were bought. Yeah, off again. they're like, oh yeah, those French judges were paid by Russia. Can you name a more intense scandal than the Jamie Sally and David <laughs> Peltier? Neg was it Nagano Olympics? When I mean, they arguably were... the one where the girl like bashed the other girl's leg and was more scandalous. Okay, fair. <laughs> Maybe the bloodshed was more scandalous. But in my Canadian what was her name? heart, Tara, Tamara, Tara, something with a T. Tyra, Tyra Banks. Uh, no, 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 no. Tara Lipinski. Uh, no, uh. no. Tara Lipinski was just like a cute little girl. Okay, we got to figure that out. No, yeah, like gay men are screaming at us from across the world if they for not Should knowing the figure up? skating. Like, yeah, there was that, we watched that movie skating, about it. Uh, Stabbing leg in, leg uh, break leg break um, <laughs> is Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy oh. Kerrigan. That's who's, the what the movie's about. It was great. Tara Tara Lipin Tanya Harding. Tanya That's Harding. But Tara team. Lipinski is a figure skater. Oh, okay. It's just Tara like a really Lipinski. like like she should we should not be dragging her into this. <laughs> like, she and, is and just, Tara Lipinski <laughs> smashed. <her laughs> she's dragon. just like a nice girl who got like bronze. <laughs> Sorry if you got gold. But um, <laughs> James Halley and David Peltier, I'm about to rewatch that right now because it's a good serotonin release so sad that they weren't given the gold medal but then they were because it was all, like all that scandal mm -hmm. made them more famous yeah. but then also the canadian couple that did come what may at the last olympics mm. when this olympics was on everyone on tiktok was sharing yeah, that, I saw that being like this feels so good and the i i cried the other day like well i didn't cry because i can't cry but i the <laughs> other day got really emotional watching it and i suggest everyone watch that one as well canadians know how to figure skate and you know what that is not a placebo because it's real <laughs> and you know what else it is not a subjective judge to competition <laughs> it's objective it's fully subjective oh my okay. god i can't wait for bodybuilding like oh. yeah let's do that soon would your trainer be able to handle me just constantly dragging him we'll find out okay <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for listening thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time Pause. bye